We're here with Michael at Water again today, this morning. So thank you very much, Michael, for allowing us into the yard. And, and just a couple of questions for you. Can you tell us how did you get into horse racing, please? Yes, yeah, so I, was, I was lucky when I was, when I was a, a kid. We um, happened to live very close to a couple of racing stables down in Sussex. And I was interested in horses. And, and as a teenager, I was able to get a part-time job. And I just loved it from there on in. And yeah, from school went out the window and it was just horses, horses, horses. And I just went from there. Okay. And can you tell us what a normal day would be like for you um, in the yard? Yeah, yeah. We, we, we start when we, we get up, Sarah and I get up about five o'clock in the morning. We feed the horses about half past five. The staff come in any time between quarter to six, six o'clock. And we ride out anywhere from three to five lots. Um, the lads muck out, they'll ride out three lots. Um, we generally finish about midday if we're not racing. Um, we'll, we'll be back in the stables by about half past three in the afternoon. We work through to about 5.30. Obviously, if we've got runners, we could be going off anywhere around the country and a 5 a.m. start could soon be a midnight finish. A long, long day. Yes, exactly, yeah. And what, what, are the, um, what is it you most love about the, the job? We get, we get a lot of horses. We, we, don't, we get a lot of older horses from other yards, and it's a great achievement if you can turn around a horse that's lost its form and... You know, with the young horses, it's nice to see them just develop and see them improving and, you know, going up on the gallops every day. If you just, you know, when you start to see your horse show that little bit of spark or you think, you know, you just don't know, just don't know what you might have. So it's always exciting, the, the thought of what, what might what might happen next, you know. Okay. And can you talk to us a little bit about what you see about the benefits of training here in Epsom R? For me, I mean, I've been in Epsom about 12 or 13 years. I was actually in Epsom... I worked in Epsom when I was younger, before I trained in Epsom. Um, I mean, the location is fantastic for us, getting, getting out onto the M25, traveling. We've got so many tracks within easy reach. It makes a real difference. It helps to keep the cost down for the, for the owners. It's nice for the horses not having to travel miles all the time. Um, you know, we're very close to London. We're very close to the coast. It's just a, it's just a really good spot to be in. Okay. And could you possibly talk a little bit about what you think has been the best horse you might have trained over the years? Yeah, funny enough, the best horse I've ever had was a horse called Empire Storm, who we bought as a, as a six-year-old. Um, the owner didn't pay an awful lot of money for him, but he, he went out to the Dubai Carnival and he was placed in, in Group 2s, Group 3s. He came back to the UK and was placed in listed races and, and also in the um, Big Handicap on Champions Day at Asker. Um, the only uh, the only thing I didn't achieve with him was winning the race, but he he, he won over a hundred thousand in prize money, so he was probably the best horse never to win a race that I've had in the yard. Okay, um, are there any um, are there any up and coming jockeys that we should be following that you think over the next season or so? I think everybody obviously knows about you know, about Kieran Fallon how well he's done. I mean, we're we're using a young jockey at the moment called Reese Clutterbuck. He's ridden probably about three or four winners for us now. He, he comes in every day. He's based down at, at Gary Moore's, but I think he's a lad that people are just starting to notice. I noticed last week he had a couple of rides for some of the bigger new market yards. And I, you know, I think with a seven pound claim, that'll soon get, get taken up. And I think one or two more people might take notice of him in the, in the coming months. Okay. And you know, going forward, could you maybe give us a recommendation or a, 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 a horse to follow for the rest of the season or for next season? We've picked, up, we've picked up a few new horses over the last few weeks and um, the horse we've got here now, he'll put his head out the door. Um, we bought this week at, at the sales, he's a horse called Acclaim the Nation who actually won at York recently. He's got a race of 98 and he's, he's actually a seven year old already but he, he seems to be having the best season of his life at the moment which is quite unusual but he's a, he's a very fast front running sprinter. Um, the, owner, the owner would love to go back to the Dubai carnival with him if, 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 it's on, if it goes ahead um, and like I say at the moment the, the first aim is a listed race at Doncaster in about two weeks time so yeah he looks a very very nice prospect and we're really looking forward to seeing him in action. Okay well, if you could poke his head out that would be great. Yeah but... <laughs> we'd get, get his head out you'd have to add that one later. Can you come with that alone now? Okay um, there he is and if you could have trained any horse past or present who would that have been? I think uh, Anyone would love to have trained Frankel. I mean, he looks to be the best horse I've ever seen and probably the best horse I'll see in my lifetime. And I mean, I think it would be scary as well as exciting having a horse as good as that around you because the expectation of the whole the whole racing world is, is watching you and, and waiting for something to go wrong. And 
for him it didn't and hopefully you know that, that would be, a, it'd be, a, it'd be an amazing amazing feeling okay and going forward uh, into 2021 and into the future what are your training ambitions um you know like I said, at the moment we've got about 40 odd horses and, and really over the last couple of years the the quality of the horses has started to improve which has been a big help and you know you the job is is so much in, more enjoyable when you've got some nice horses something always something to look forward to and something new coming through and i think you know everyone's got ambitious ambitions to be, win big races or have hundreds of horses but i think just to keep on growing as we are get better quality horses and be able to compete at a higher level on a regular basis that to me would be a, a realistic aim okay and if you could um which race would you most like to win I think I'd most like to win the Derby. I think most people think that. Um, you know, it would it'd be a massive achievement to win a race of that calibre. Uh, you know, some of the big international races, the Art of Triumph and the Dubai World Cup. But I think the Derby, the Derby is well known, is worldly well known. And I think uh, if anyone didn't want to win that, <laughs> they must have already won it before, I should think. That's amazing. That's great. Well, thank you very much for, your, for the time. That's all of the set questions I've got.